our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being told explicitly, you know, فَاتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا Follow the religion of Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. Follow the religion of Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. And you know the famous surah you recite at the end of the Quran, the short surahs, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Right? When Quraysh were being told Allah has done them so many favors, and Allah reminded them, well, because Allah has done them so many favors, they shouldn't be putting idols around the Kaaba. They should be worshipping the Rabb of this house. The Rabb of this house. Instead of saying, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ He says, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ They should worship the master of this house. The reference to this house goes back to the one who built this house and for the purpose for, the purpose for which he built it. And that's Ibrahim alayhi salam. Again, in the, at the end of the Qur'an, when Allah talked about the favors He has done to uh, the Quraysh, there are two favors that He's done, two big favors that He did to the Quraysh, even though they worshipped idols. One favor He did to them is He protected them from destruction. They were powerless people. They're in the desert. They don't have a super army. They're not like the Roman Empire or the Persian Empire or even Abraha or anybody else. They don't have that kind of military capacity. And they are in a valley. So they're easy to attack actually from above, in fact. So they are in this disadvantageous position, and yet Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka fi ashab al-fil." Many of you know the surah. Allah protected them, even though the odds against them were impossible. And then in the next surah, He says, "So that's that's the first favor, safety. He provided them safety. But the other is they were in the desert, and in the desert, you're not going to get a lot of crop. You're not going to get fruits. You're not going to get means of." Sustaining yourself. There are societies, the human civilization prefer to settle down where the soil was, you know, it's easy to irrigate, right? So m many, many cultures in the world, they left their, their harsh climates to go to places where they could get better soil so they can make their own food. Like if you study even, for example, Nor the Norwe Nor Norwegians and the Vikings or whatever, <laughs> they travel different parts of the world because the, their part of the world is bitterly cold. And they can freeze to death. So they're ending up in England and in Russia, all over the place. Why? Because they want farmland at the end of the day. But these people don't have any farmland. They don't have any agriculture. They, how are they going to sustain themselves? They only, they, they're going to have to survive majority by imported food. You see? And the countries even to this day, for example, if you go to countries like Qatar or you know, the Emirates or these kinds of countries, huge amounts of their food is actually imported. You know, just recently they, they imported several thousand cows <laughs> just so they can have their own milk and they can have their own dairy products, right? So the idea is that region is not sustainable for food. What, what did Allah do? He said, رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْف They could travel summer and winter, they can import goods and make money. Not only are they getting food, they're getting wealthy too. So the two things Allah did for the Quraysh was He gave them safety and He provided for them. And the safety was otherwise impossible for them And the provision was also otherwise impossible for them Those two things were impossible But why am I mentioning these two things? What's the connection to that in Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim alayhi salam thousands of years ago when he built this Kaaba He said رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Make this house a peaceful place Make this land a peaceful city pr Protect it And provide its people from all kinds of fruit so thousands of years later in the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, the Quraysh lived the kind of life that they lived because the dua of Ibrahim salam is answered actually. So they're living, they're living the echo of the dua of Ibrahim salam. So the entire seerah actually takes place. The mission of the Prophet wasallam takes place and the, in the background of it constantly is actually the legacy of Ibrahim salam. That applies to him, it also applies to the Quraysh. Now that's one side of it. But our Messenger, وسلم, he had two different audiences. 